Control is a fantastic game with so much to do and see, but you kind of get dropped off cluelessly at the front door and left to fend for yourself. Here are a few tips, tricks, and things to know when playing Control. Getting around in Control can be a bit confusing. Let's help clear things up. The sector elevator in Central Executive is the only real way to access new sectors at first. Using it when new sectors initially become available will allow you to fast travel to them in the future. Follow the signs. The signs will always tell you where you need to go. The map is a good overview, but multiple levels are stacked on top of each other, often making finding specific locations confusing. Control points are critical. Cleanse every single one that you find. They act as points for quick travel, they allow you to access board countermeasures, astral constructs, the ability tree, they allow you to change outfits at Central Executive, and if you die, you'll spawn back at the control point you last accessed. There are two main in-game currencies, source points and ability points. Source points are the main in-game currency for buying and unlocking modifications, upgrades, both for Jesse and for the service weapon. These are earned for killing enemies, picking up items, and completing missions. Ability points are the in-game currency for unlocking and upgrading Jesse's supernatural abilities. These are awarded for completing main storyline missions and side quests. They can also be found in secret crates, often in difficult to access areas hidden throughout the game, so keep an eye out for those. Using ability points will unlock additional personal and weapon mod slots, so make sure you use them. Other items used for service weapon form unlocks and upgrades are gathered from crates and completing missions. Let's talk about mods. They can be accessed anytime during the game and provide bonuses to both Jesse and her service weapon. Mods are classed as common, uncommon, rare, prime, and absolute, with absolute being the best and common being the worst. Make sure you check your supplies often to ensure you always have the best mods installed. Don't bother crafting or upgrading your own mods, as the drops in game are plentiful and often better. If you still want to craft your own mods, do so at control points via the Astral Constructs option, but I would save the source points for unlocking and upgrading the service weapon. Make sure you get rid of any duplicate or unwanted mods by using the Deconstruct option and receiving source in return. For personal mods, I suggest either using the Health Increase, Health Pickup Bonus, Energy Amount, or Energy Recharge mods. The service weapon is your main weapon during the game and has five distinct functions called forms. Forms are unlocked or upgraded in exchange for source points from a control point and selecting the Astral Construct option. Grip, which acts like a semi-automatic pistol, is a starting form and useful throughout the entire game. It's reasonably accurate and can be quite deadly at a variety of ranges. Suggested mods include damage, headshot boost, and weapon armor damage. Shatter is similar to a shotgun, but fires a horizontal spread of pellets. Great for doing a lot of damage in close or to a small group of enemies at close to medium range, or even taking down enemy shields. Suggested mods include damage, chokes, and extra projectiles. Pierce is a very powerful railgun type energy weapon with high accuracy. But it takes a full second to charge and with only two shots you need to make every shot count. Shots can travel through items until they hit the nearest wall. Suggested mods include aim fire boost, reload speed, and damage increase. Charge fires an implosion charge that affects a small area with damage. Press once for a single charge or hold for up to three simultaneously. I like to use it to fire down at the ground at enemies while using levitate. It's not super damaging, but it does work well in combination with abilities. Suggested upgrades include charge blast boost, charge velocity, and damage boost. And finally, Spin. It's essentially an automatic pistol, but don't bother with it. It's useless. The damage output and accuracy don't make it particularly useful when other options more than suffice. Personally, I wouldn't bother upgrading the weapon forms until you've unlocked them all. Try them out, see what you like best, and go from there. Do keep in mind that you can only have two forms equipped at any one time. Personally, I prefer Grip and Charge. Abilities are Jesse's paranormal bread and butter and can be accessed from the menu at control points. Health is the first upgradable quote unquote ability and should be a point of focus at the start of the game as health doesn't recharge on its own so that extra buffer during combat is always welcome. Energy is consumed every time you use your powers. Some extra energy is helpful in letting you use your abilities for longer periods of time before having to recharge. Melee is basically a short range attack and is handy for dispensing enemies in close. While you may not use it as much as some of the other abilities, it's still handy to have when you need it. Launch is your main offensive ability and it should be upgraded for maximum damage. It can be upgraded to catch and throw back explosives, enemies, large objects and up to three items simultaneously. 
Evade allows you to quickly move in one direction to either cover distance quickly or to avoid incoming fire. You can even use it multiple times in a row to basically fly. Shield picks up rocks and debris from around you and is used to help block incoming fire. It can be upgraded to Shield Barrage to use the shield as projectiles or to Shield Rush when combined with Evade it will knock down enemies. You can even upgrade it to recover energy while in use. Seize allows you to force an enemy low on health to fight for you instead of against you. Use it from cover if you can as it takes a few seconds to activate. Seize can be upgraded to turn multiple enemies or even large enemies. And last but not least, Levitate allows you to jump to great heights and hover midair for a period of time. This ability doesn't actually use up energy. Upgrading it allows you to increase the time you can spend midair, and it can be upgraded to Ground Slam, which allows you to slam into the ground causing damage to nearby enemies. Let's talk about side quests. Bureau Alerts are time-limited missions that pop up periodically. You'll receive rewards and ability points for completing successfully. Board countermeasures can be accessed at control points and offer free mods for completing bounty-based goals. Always select the ones for the area you're in. There's no penalty for abandoning them, so don't feel bad, and there's always more to choose from. NPCs are a great source of extra content and ability points. Check with Emily in Central Executive, Arish in the Maintenance Sector, Dr. Underhill in her lab below Central Research, Dr. Langston near the Panopticon, and Audi, the janitor in maintenance, his What A Mess series of missions in particular provides a large number of ability points, so check those out. You can also check the notice board in his office. Here's a few short combat tips. Health does not recharge, so avoid enemy fire as much as possible. Limit damage during combat by moving steadily and using cover. The use of the evade ability to move quickly is ideal and can be used multiple times in a row within the combat area to quickly reposition yourself. Rotate between your abilities and the service weapon. This will allow time for your energy to recharge while using the service weapon and time to reload while using abilities. Switching your point of view from left to right shoulder and vice versa as needed will allow you to see more and attack from different angles. It can be swapped any time in game by pressing R on the PC. Hiss walls and doors are impossible to get past without first destroying the nearby hiss nodes to remove the hiss from the door wall. Once they've all been destroyed, the blockage will be gone. There you have it, there's 10 tips, tricks and things to know to help you get acquainted with the oldest house. I hope you've learned something along the way. Don't forget to share your tips and tricks in the comments below. Thanks for watching everyone, this is Chris from Talon Gaming, signing out.